Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the 6th module of our Amazon Machine Learning course and this 6th module is all about machine learning models and some important concepts related to it. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about overfitting in machine learning. So overfitting is one of the issues that we uh, come across in machine learning and machine learning projects. So we need to, you know, uh, rectify this overfitting problem when we uh, face one. Okay. So in this video, let's try to understand what is meant by this overfitting and uh, what factors causes this overfitting and how we can prevent this overfitting in the market. Okay. So these are the topics that we will be covering in today's video. So before getting started, in case you are watching my videos for the first time, Hi, in this YouTube channel, I'm making an hands on machine learning course. And if you want to learn this course from the beginning, I'll give the link of my course playlist in the description of this video. You can check that out. With that being said, let's get started with today's video. So what is meant by this overfitting? Overfitting refers to a model that models the training data too well. Overfitting happens when a model learns the detail and noises in the training data set to the extent that it negatively impacts the performance of the model. So this is the formal definition of overfitting. So first let's try to understand the first statement. So it models the training data too well. So the other way to uh, you know say this is the model overtrains on the training data. Okay. So what happens when it overtrains on the training data is that so this is the optimum uh, model. Okay, so if we try to uh, fit a model or a curve to the data, so this is a curve that we get. So let's say that we have some uh, uh, variables in the x-axis and uh, the output variables in the y-axis. So the predictor variable can be the features. Let's say that we want to uh, predict the salary of the person based on their work, work experience. So in this case, the work experience will be taken in the x-axis and uh, the salary that we can predict can be taken in the y-axis and we have some data points. Let's say that uh, if a person has an experience of five years, they may make a salary of about uh, you know 6 lakhs per annum or 7 lakhs per annum something like that so this is the data set we have with x value and y value and we have uh, these many data points the green color points represent the data points okay and we try to fit a curve into this uh, data points if uh, it is an optimal model it will uh, try to find a common trend in it so you can see a curve here so Whereas if a model is overfitted, you will get a curve something like this. So the curve will try to, uh, you know, join all the data points. So you will get an irregular curve, but this curve is actually kind of regular, right? So this is the difference between an optimal model and overfitting uh, model. So a overfitting model tries to model the data too well. So that's what it is, uh, you know, given in this particular statement. So modeling means it try to fit into all the data points. And when a model tries to fit into all the data points, we get, we cannot get a regular curve. So when, when we don't get a regular curve, we cannot make uh, good predictions out of it. But in this case, we have a generalized uh, you know curve right so we have a generalized model a generalized function where in this case the function is not generalized so we have some uh, uh, rises and the dips in this curve and we cannot rely on this particular curve whereas uh, this curve is very optimal so the data points are uh, the data points in this particular graph and this graph is actually the same whereas the curve is uh, actually different okay so this is about overfitting where a model tries to overfit the data or overtrain on the data so this is one issue we face in machine learning so what happens in overfitting is that it tries to learn the details and noises in the training data noises can be outliers and uh, some data points that doesn't make sense okay so a good model tries to ignore these noises that are present in the data set okay so hence it tries to find a generalized value whereas when it is overfitted it tries to fit in all those uh, data points which can be noises okay so this is the difference between an optimal model and an overfitted model so now you may ask a question that how we can find whether our model has overfitted okay so one sign that the model has overfitted is you will get a high training data accuracy and a very low test data accuracy. So the accuracy on the training data will be very high and the accuracy on uh, test data will be very low. Okay. So in our uh, machine learning project, so this is why we try to find the accuracy score for both the training data and the test data as well. Okay. So if uh, the accuracy on both the training data and test data is the same, let's say that the accuracy on training data is uh, 85 percentage and the accuracy on the test data is 83 percentage, it's almost similar. In that case, we can say that the model is very optimal. If the training data accuracy is uh, 95 percentage and the test data accuracy is like 30 percentage or 40 percentage, then we say that the model is overfitted because it cannot find a proper, uh, you know, generalization and it cannot uh, perform well. 
okay so uh, this is why we split the data into training data and testing data and we try to find the accuracy for both the cases okay so this is all about overfitting where a model tries to overlearn the data or it tries to fit to all the data points so when a model tries to fit to all the data points it cannot give you a generalization and it cannot be reliable to make predictions out of it okay so this is all about overfitting now let's try to understand this with an example Let's say that we have a set of values, x values and y values. So the x values range from 1 to all the way to 10 and we have some y values. And let's say that uh, y value is related to this x value. So there is some function to it. So you can also consider uh, this as the previous example we have considered. So x may represent the number of years of experience and y may represent the salary of the person. Uh, he gets based on his work experience or something like that. So we have X which is the feature and we have Y which is uh, the target variable. So this is how we work in machine learning, right? So we take all the features as a X variable and all the uh, target, uh, sorry, uh, the target variable in the Y variable, okay? So let's try to plot these values in a graph. So this is the plot we get. So uh, the value for one, so when the, the coordinate for this first point is 1 comma 1.38 where the x coordinate is 1 and the y coordinate is 1.38 and if you take the second value the x coordinate is 2 so it is plotted in this particular line and the y coordinate is 101 so it is plotted here so similarly we are plotting for all the 10 points okay and now we need to find the trend in these points so we can say that uh, there is an increased uh, trend right so if x value increases y value also increases in this particular case but we don't know what is the relationship between them so let's try to fit these data points in uh, in a curve so this is also called as uh, overfitting sorry this particular uh, thing is called as curve fitting so we would have uh, studied about this curve fitting in our engineering and mathematics course so let's try to fit this in a proper curve so when your data has overfitted this is how your uh, curve looks so here you can see here we have uh, the data points almost lie in a straight line almost in a straight line whereas this particular data point uh, is somewhat odd right so everything lie in almost a uh, straight line whereas this is a uh, kind of an outlier so we can call this data point as a noise so when you try to overfit the data uh, the model tries to fit to all the data points and there is not a common trend here so there is some uh, increase in the model here. so there is a peak here and there is again a dip and there is a, uh, again a peak and there is a dip and so on right so this is called as a overfitted model now let's see how a uh, proper fit or an optimal fit looks like so this is a good fit where we try to generalize the curve okay so there is a uh, this is actually not a straight line but it is more general when compared to this overfitted model so we can call this as a good fit and this uh, curve can be called as a overfitted model so this is what happens in machine learning when we have a overfitted model and a good fit uh, model okay so as i've told you before if your training data accuracy is more and your test data accuracy is very less then that means your model is overfitted okay so now let's understand what is the causes for uh, this particular overfitting problem and how we can solve this overfitting problem. So the one main thing which we can uh, think of of overfitting is less data. So when your data set does not contains many data points, so whenever you are having a very small data set, in that cases we have this uh, uh, you know thing where the model may overfit. So there is a high probability that your model will overfit if you have a smaller data set and the increased complexity of the model. So if your uh, complexity of the model is very more or if the complexity is i, then your model is probably going to overfit. In this case, let's say that uh, this will be a more complicated model. The complexity of the model will be uh, very huge. Okay, so it will be a polynomial equation for this curve. Whereas in this case, it is almost a sim uh, you know a simple model. Okay, so it is very similar to a straight line equation. Whereas this particular model will be a complicated equation. So whenever you are having a more complex model, then uh, your model is more probably uh, going to overfit okay say for example a linear regression is a very simple model so in some cases we can use a linear regression so we don't have to use uh, more complex models like uh, you know a deep neural network or something like that so whenever you are using a more complex model like a neural network for a simple problem then uh, it is most probably going to overfit but whenever you, whenever you are using a simple uh, model then your model is not going to overfit okay so this is not for all the cases but it depends on the data set that we have the problem that we have if the problem statement is simple if the pro you know the data is as a linear relationship between them so in the previous example that we considered it is a linear uh, you know related problem say uh, 
the work experience and the salary. If the work experience increases, the person is going to get an increased salary. So there is a linear relationship between them. If one value increases, the other value also increases. So we can use a simple regression model in that case. So if in that case we use a com complex models such as our neural networks, we may face into the issue of overfitting. Okay. So the first uh, thing which causes overfitting is less data, and the second uh, reason which causes overfitting is more complex models and uh, more number of layers in the neural network. So in a neural network, we have an input layer and we have some hidden layers. And finally, we have the output layer. In hidden layers, we can have multiple layers, okay? And uh, if you have a several number of layers in this hidden layers, then uh, there is a high chance that your neural network will overfit. So in that case, we may tend to reduce the number of layers that we have in our uh, neural network model. In that case, our model will work fine. So these are the three main causes that causes overfitting. So one is having a smaller data set. The second reason is having a very complex model. And the third reason can be, this is in the case of neural networks. So whenever we are using a neural network, if we have a more number of layers, then uh, we have an issue of overfitting. Okay. Now, as we have understood what are the causes for overfitting, now let's try to understand how we can prevent this overfitting from happening. So one is using uh, more data. So as we have uh, discussed here, less data causes overfitting. If you have a larger data set, then the model is, uh, you know, ignores uh, outliers most of the time. So it can understand the data better if it has more data. So it is a very important uh, concept in machine learning and deep learning as well. More the data, you know, uh, better the performance of the model is. So if you have more data, then uh, the chance that you will get overfitting is very less. Okay, so this is how you can solve uh, the overfitting issue and uh, reduce the number of layers in the neural network. As I have told you before, increased number of layers in the neural network will uh, cause overfitting. And if you reduce the number of layers, then uh, you, you will get an optimal fit of a model. And yearly stopping. So yearly stopping is a technique that we use in machine learning. So what happens in yearly stopping is that uh, in uh, machine learning, we iterate the data multiple times. So the model tries to uh, learn from the data multiple times. And this is called as an iteration because it does the same thing again and again. So when we do early stopping techniques, the model tries to stop learning once it uh, you know overfits. So when overfitting starts, the model stops the training part. And this is called as yearly stopping. So by using this technique, we can stop the model from learning if it tries to overfit. Okay. And then we have a bias variance trade off. So bias variance trade off is one of the most important topic that we have in machine learning. And uh, this particular bias variance trade off technique is used to find the optimum model for a data set. So this is one of the uh, model optimization technique. So I cannot explain you in detail about bias variance trade off. So we need a separate video on this particular topic. So I'll be making a separate module called as uh, machine learning model optimization. So in that video, we will be discussing more about this early stopping, bias variance rate of gradient descent, etc. So these are model optimization techniques. So in that uh, video, I'll be explaining you in detail about these topics. So uh, for now, understand that uh, or keep in mind that bias variance rate of is uh, helpful to find the optimum model with a uh, data set. Okay. So and then uh, using dropouts. So dropouts is also another technique that is used in neural networks. So this is not actually used much in machine learning, but it's used in deep learning in uh, neural networks. So as I've told you before, neural networks has multiple layers and each layer contains multiple neurons. Okay. And uh, dropout is something that we use. So if we use dropout, some neurons will be uh, dropped out randomly. Some neurons will be turned off randomly and this stops uh, the problem of overfitting. So if you have less number of neurons, your model is uh, the complexity of the model reduces and thus the model won't overfit. So these are the things that we can use to prevent a model from overfitting. So the first is having a larger data set. Second is the reducing the number of layers in the neural network. Third one is yearly stopping where the model stops the training if it tries to overfit and then we have bias variance trade off which is very helpful to find the optimum model for a data set. And then finally, we have a dropouts where a few uh, neurons will be dropped out randomly from the neural network. So these are the causes and uh, how to prevent this uh, causes in order to uh, prevent overfitting. Okay. So I hope you have understood all the contents that are covered in this video about overfitting and how to prevent overfitting. And that's it for this video and see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.